Hey guys and welcome back, Illusion here with you again like always. And I'm actually in my SMP world. Now a while back I did a kind of a quick video on Inscriber Automation with Steve's Factory Manager. And I just mainly did it kind of as an introduction and I just wanted to kind of start playing with it. Um, I know there's been a few comments on that video that you want to see more about it. So this is the video where I'm going to show you my complete automation system from my SMP world. Did decided not to go into a creative world because it's a lot of duplication of coding and it's, uh, you know, I got it tweaked the way I want it. So it's just easier for me to jump here and kind of show you what I've done and how it works. So my system right here is I have three inscribers. I have some inventory cable running along underneath all the inscribers and then the factory manager kind of has the brains of the system. I also have a strong box that acts as my buffer chest and then I have my interface. The interface exports into the strong box and the manager, Steve Factory Manager, accesses the strong box as the buffer chest. Now if I click on the inventory, this is what I've taught the AE system to do. So if I request a calculation processors, it's going to send one piece of redstone, one piece of silicon, and one piece of pure certus quartz. Same thing with logic and then same thing with engineering. So basically it's just exporting the raw materials to this chest, the strong box. And in here you can see I have all the presses already in here and I keep just a little bit extra redstone and some extra printed silicon in here just to make the things, the processor go a little bit faster. So let's talk about the actual coding of it itself. Now in the first video I did this, I did it with just one or two processors. Or, I'm sorry, two, one or two inscribers. Now in my SMP world, I recently added a third inscriber because I found it was getting bogged down because I was requesting some uh, fair amount of processors and it was getting a little confused, mainly with timing. Now I believe there's another way to fix this timing, but it's I found just adding a third inscriber fixed it without me having to do a bunch of tweaking with the timing. And I'll show you what I mean once we get into the actual coding portion. So this left inscriber is the inscriber that puts everything all together. And you can see that I already have a piece of redstone and a piece of printed silicon waiting just to get the circuit to go on top to make it. So it's just always in a standby state ready to go. Now these two inscribers over here are what actually make all the pieces and this one puts it together. Alright, so let's do it. So I've broken up into two command groups, command groups right here I highly recommend you looking into Steve's Factory Manager for more of a tutorial if you're not familiar. Direwolf did a very good um, tutorial on that, spotlight on it. Definitely recommend watching it out, watching it. And this is not going to be a Steve's Factory Manager tutorial. This is me showing you exactly what my code is. So I'm going to go into the right command group. Now the right command group is these two inscribers right here. Now it looks like a little bit of a jumbled mess, but once I explain it to you, it'll make a whole lot of sense. So I'm going to go down the silicon because that's the one I've kind of cleaned up and made it look pretty. So let's mainly just focus on this line right here. So here's my timer. I have it set for one second and it goes into a condition. And what this condition is going to do is I want you to check the strong box for silicon. Because remember the interface is going to export the silicon to the strong box and if it once it checks it and if it does detect the silicon in there then we're going to go down the true line and once if once it does detect it I want you to grab the inscriber press and that one piece of silicon or how many pieces of silicon I've got it split into a flow so I can take that one input signal and turn it into two and then I want you to take the press and I want you to put it in the top slot, the up slot of the inscriber. And then I want you to take the silicon and put it in one of the other slots of that same inscriber. So that's what actually makes the print silicon chip. Now, on this condition, if it goes down the false line, meaning that there's no more silicon in the strong box, it'll go down the false line. And what that'll do is it'll access that inscriber, clear everything out, and send everything 
back to the strong box. So that's my clear function and to import everything back in to the strong box as kind of a completed version of the printed silicon right here. All right. So that's how my coding works. Now, I'm not going to say this is the best way to do it. I'm sure there's other ways. I like I mentioned in all my videos or I try to this is just one way to do it. This is not the end all to be all way to do it, but this is a good way to do it that does work. Now if you look, my coding is identical for both the diamond, the pure, and the gold. So check the condition. If the condition is true, grab everything from the strong box, send it to the scriber to get made. Once there's no more, in this, like in this case there's no more diamond in the strong box, then we clear everything and send it back. Same thing with pure. You can see how my coding works. Now what I was having happening that when I was running just two, one inscriber on this side for a total of two that I was noticing that sometimes I would have a piece of silicon there with a diamond pressed or a pure press. It was getting a little bit messed up. Now I know you can tweak this with timing intervals. I have this set for two, I have set for five, and I believe this is set for three. Now I know you can mess with the intervals of the little bit to kind of clean it up, but what I found is that I'm just splitting off the silicon to one inscriber, fix the whole problem. So only this inscriber makes silicon, and this inscriber makes everything else, the printed circuits. And I found that fixed the issue. So let's say if you go here to output, you'll see this is the bottom one right here and this one is this one right here so that's how I've fixed my timing issue and it ultimately sped up the whole process so once we actually have the chips made, the processors made the circuits, then we go down the left line and this is just super basic coding so silicon going into the bottom slot, redstone going into the middle slot, and this is checking the condition is if any of the printed logic circuits are there, go down the true line, which is grabbing them from the strong box, and stick on them in the inscriber to get made. And then I just have a super simple trigger, clear out the anything completed, clear out any of the completed processors and throw them back in to the strong box. And then I have just a little piece of item conduit sending things back to the interface acting not only as a export of the raw materials but an import back into that. Now I could throw an import bus back on there but I think I was tight on channels when I first designed this and um, I just never took the time to fix it. So. I have to see where I am with channels, but I probably can make that look better, make it look a little cleaner, but I don't know, it gives a little bit of the uh, um, industrial feel, so I kind of like it. Now I've actually taken this a step further. I'm using a crafting card in this ME interface telling the system to always keep 24 16 and 16 respectively of each of the different processors in the network at all time and this crafting card said will tell the system hey you're not meeting my limit go ahead and ship some items to the strong box to get made now I can give you a for instance I can show you how this is gonna work I'm gonna grab a piece of gold and I'll show you kinda of how uh, how the system works Put a piece of gold in there. Ship there. Clear it back to the strong box. And then import it back into the network. And you can see it runs very, very quickly. So, I like it. So that's going to kind of conclude my little Steve's automation with Steve's factory manager of the inscriber. Uh, if you want me to, I can do some more videos, maybe play with the timing to see how compact I can get it. I could probably do that if it's if anybody really uh, requests it, but I like this system. It works really cool. It's easy to do, and um, 
you know, I like finding new ways to automate things with Steve's Factory Manager and other of all the all the other cool mods we're using. Um, also, I mean, like I said, this is my SMP world. Um, I'm only about 10 or 12 videos into that, so still very new in the series, but this is my little base. And before anybody asks, this is a storage multi-block from Draconic Evolution that's currently holding 229 billion RF. Yes. Top left corner, 229 billion. A lot of RF. So, thanks. Enjoy. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any questions down below, and I'll see you on the next one.